Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to do in-app payments with React Native. Um, this is something there's not too much information about on the internet, especially if you are working with reoccurring subscriptions. So hopefully this video will um, be of great help if you are looking to implement in-app purchases. All right, so on the screen right now, you can see I have a demo project and this demo project is actually from the library itself. So it's on the library page. Uh, the library that I have chosen to use is React Native IAP. And this one seems to be the most uh, mature package when it comes to in-app payments. And uh, in here, we do have an example. Basically what I did was I just clone this example down. And uh, this is the code you see here. But um, I'm going to be changing this example a little bit since it's actually a bunch of code here and it's going to take a while to understand all this. So I'm just going to um, create everything from scratch to make it more understandable what's going on. But before that, I quickly want to talk about how to set up in app payments. So when you copy this example down, it will work. So let me showcase that. So if I open up my simulator here, you can see um, I can press get products and then get the different products, the different uh, subscriptions that my app has. But the reason why this works is because I'm using the React Native um, in-app purchase example here. So the bundle ID is already registered on a demo account where these products are defined. If you are going to create your own, what you need to do is first of all, you need to open up your App Store Connect. Then you need to go to Agreements, Tax and Banking. And here you need to set up some agreements when it comes to payments so when you can actually receive money uh, when people subscribe for your different products. Uh, after that is done and has been processed and confirmed, that might take a day or so, then you can go into my apps here and then you can start defining your different products. And then the next step is to open up Xcode. And inside Xcode, you just put in uh, the bundle ID of the app that you define those products for. And after that, you can, you can get started. All right. So let's jump back to the example here and let's just uh, erase all of this code and start a little bit from scratch here. So we actually not using TypeScript, we're using JavaScript. So actually it's okay. Yep. Just move this type. Okay. So let's just uh, start from scratch. Let's try to um, just render some simple stuff to see if it's working. Open up our simulator. All right. All right, so it's actually rendering something here. All right, cool. So, when we do in-app payments, the first thing we want to do is um, we want to have some kind of state where we store our subscriptions on the user. So typically in an app, we would have some user state. And I'm going to use a user state hook in this example to define user state. And um, yeah, we might have a name for this user. Could be my name. Okay, something like this. All right, so when you get onto, onto this page, you would check whether this user has a subscription, right? And uh, we can just have a subscription like this and, define, and just say undefined because we don't have a subscription with this user, okay? So next step will be to um, grab the different products of the um, of the app, and for that 
we need to use this great library here. So let's import IAP from React Native IAP. Okay. So inside use effect hook. This is some code that runs when we enter this screen. We can actually call a get products method here. And this get products uh, method takes an array of strings of the products um, that we want to potentially show, All right? So for this, I'm gonna need those strings uh, for this demo app that is defined for, yeah, for this demo. So for that, I can jump back here and I can just basically grab that from the app.js file here. So I'm only showing iOS by the way. So um, if you're doing Android only or doing both, then uh, you at least learn how to do it the iOS way in this video. Okay. So let's define i product IDs. Oh. And let's paste these in here. So these are our two demos subscriptions or products all right then we can pass them in here and this is a promise so we can throw it then on the back here and then whatever response we get here we can initially try to log that let me try to get the simulate out again okay all right so if we actually just open up the terminal here we can see it's printing out our different products here and we can render those products out so let's just uh, define some in additional state for the products and that just at the array empty for now and in here we can then do set products email res okay and down here we can render that out so what does a product consist of see here so we have a currency description price all right so let's just render out the description for now okay so in here could render out a view and then have a text field with the description and then maybe a button that says subscribe now oh sorry this is not the api for the native button so here we need to pass in title i believe all right cool this is our two products Cool. So uh, now something needs to happen when we say click subscribe now, and that's where the second method comes into play that we need to know about. And that is the on the IAP object we have a uh, I think it's a quest. Yeah, so request purchase a subscription, uh, whatever this may be. And then here we just pass in the product ID. So on product, we have a product ID as well. To confirm that, we can open up the Metro Bundler here. Uh, it's not super clear, uh, but here you can see there's a product ID. All right, cool. Now, this is looking good. Now, what happens when I click request subscription? Well, a callback is fired. And that's the next one we need to define um, and potentially the last one, which is important. So hang on tight here. So inside our use effect, which is only gonna run once, we can add in a purchase subs update subscription here. So on the IAP object, we're gonna 
access purchase update listener. And here we have a function uh, which returns a purchase. So here we get a purchase. And then we have a function body here. Okay. So here we can do a check. Or oh, first we can define a receipt, which will be on the purchase dot transaction action receipt. So here, this is where TypeScript is very nice. All of this will be typed, so I wouldn't have to look up the documentation or whatnot, and I'll make sure I spell it right. But basically, on this purchase, there will be a receipt. And the receipt is the one we will use for um, checking if we have an active subscription uh, and what that subscription may be. Okay. So if we have a receipt here, we can do a call to our backend. Okay. So this is pretty important. Uh, hold on. Let me just. So inside our use effect, we need to make sure we have a return statement here to clean up. And for the purchase update subscription, I want to call remove on this one to make sure that this one disappears when we leave the screen. All right. Now in here, usually, oh, what we have to do, this is what we have to do when we are making an app inside here we need to save this receipt and there's a very important uh, reasoning for this this is because we need to uh, validate or verify this receipt uh, with the Apple backend in order to check uh, if it's expired uh, and whatnot uh, and also if it's valid so it's very important that we save this somewhere so if we were using fetch, for example, we can do fetch, backend, and then we could make a post, right? And then as the body, we might pass in, oh, let's see, it needs to be JSON stringify, so JSON stringify, we may have a receipt here, and then my point at receipt, right? So we can rule one like this. This is just an example call using fetch, right? Um, okay. So there's one more method we need to call in here after we saved it in our backend. And that is um, the finished transaction. So in here we can do IAP.finish transaction. And here we can pass in our purchase. When we do this call, we basically alert the user saying the purchase is successful. We're kind of indicating here, we have your receipt in our backend, everything is good. All right. And um, yeah, this is more or less the code you need. So when you get to this point where you finish the transaction, you have the receipt in your backend. You can update your user state here. So you could do like set user, previous user, um, uh, you could copy that. And then for the subscription, uh, you could pass in um, the whole purchase or you can just pass in the product ID. It doesn't matter how you structure or well it matters how you structure it but it's up to you right so in here i could put in uh, purchase dot product id right in here and then when i enter this screen um i could make a check down here so instead of subscribe now i could check for the user subscription so here i could do like user subscription is it equal to product.id if it is i want to show just some maybe just a button here 
that says unsubscribe. Oh, something like this. Oh, sorry. This is product that product ID. Yeah, so something like this. So if you subscribe, it will say unsubscribe. And uh, just a quick disclaimer, how to unsubscribe, you can uh, check out the repo here to find it out. So if you search for unsubscribe, uh, okay, oh, it's here. So how can I use a cancel subscription in my app? If you're on iOS, you just call this link. So in here you could do on press and then Call this URL, which basically takes you to a page on your phone where you can see what subscriptions you have and unsubscribe. All right. Now the last thing I want to show you, guys, is uh, how we do the verification on the back end. And for that, I'm gonna open up Postman here. So um, you can see here, I have an example request. So let me just, uh, and this is a response that I'm getting from uh, the sandbox environment on sandbox.itunes.apple.com slash verify receipt. Here I'm getting a response back, which tells me a little bit about the subscription I've saved in my database. So here I can go down to latest receipt info. I can check which uh, product was bought, how many, and then here I can check how's the auto renew status, has it been renewed, has it been canceled. And uh, to figure out exactly what body you need to send here, uh, you can just um, uh, search it. So uh, let me see, Apple verify receipt, I believe it's here, yes here. I'm going to put a link in the description so you can see it. This is the endpoint, uh, in here you can see what you need to send, um, which is basically just uh, receipt data. So the receipt data is uh, the one that we get here. It's like a base 64 encoded uh, thingy you pass. The second one is the password. Now this password confused me a little bit in the beginning, but basically this password is a password you set inside App Store Connect. So if you go to my apps and you go to the section for the uh, subscriptions, you can uh, generate a secret there that you just pass along and then exclude all transactions you can also send this one along if you want all right guys this was uh, my little uh, get starting guide with uh, adding in-app payments to your iOS app I hope this was uh, useful I tried to make it as simple as possible here um, and uh, I couldn't give um, a more concrete example without uh, exposing some of my own apps and whatnot so I hope this will do if you have any questions put them down below and try and answer peace